have to go. So we will call this meeting to order for the airport commission. First item is roll call. Larry Clemens is excused. Chris Crawley. Here. Adam Gazapian. Here. Tim Green. Here. Bill Kutsky. Here. Dennis Nachreiner is absent. David Tesh. Here. And I am here. Next on the agenda is public comment. First up is Tom Benson. Please state your name and address. My name is Tom Benson. I live at 907 Saddle Ridge. And what the reason I wanted to comment, um, I do a lot of fundraising and volunteer work. So I deal with, uh, I'm president of the Saddle Ridge Marina, so I deal with the DNR. I deal with Pacific Township. But probably the most difficult entity I deal with is the city of Portage. Uh, I'm not trying to break any rules or anything. I'm just a volunteer raise money from the Boys and Girls Club and, and for our EAA. Um, and so recently I had some difficulty trying to, for this uh, chili feed for the Boys and Girls Fund, uh, permitting it. And, and it was confusing. And I was told things that seemed opposite of the city ordinances. So I looked up city ordinance 201 and 202, and they seem very defined. Uh, airport commission does the authority of the airport commission which doesn't seem to operate that way in reality um, and then i looked at what the liaison for the city does and it, it says they they serve as a liaison from the city of portage to the commission upon the request of the chairperson of the commission and i i'm not led to that that isn't how it is um, so what i'm saying is somebody who just volunteers all their time and works for charities like the Boys and Girls Club and does fundraising, uh, I, the, some clarification would be great because what you're gonna do is take people that really wanna do the right thing um, and then turn them off. So that's my comment. Thank you. Next up is Brian Becker, please state your address. Uh, good evening. My name is Brian Becker, and my address is N5661 Thunderbird Road, Portage, Wisconsin. Uh, I have a small business in town here behind the city shop, SafeMark. And um, I came today at night because I wanted to talk about what I've kind of heard through the grapevine is that uh, one of the reasons why that the city might, the city uh, commission or the city council may want to still control I would argue usurp the control of the commission is because of a conflict of interest because many of the pilots of the people on that board uh, have rent uh, hangers with rent and things like that. And my, my question would be, was my, my understanding is the mayor appointed all those people. So then what we'd one would be saying is that the mayor appointed people who had a conflict of interest. So, and then with that conflict of interest, then they could take their authority away from them. So it would be a self-fulfilling prophecy. You, you appoint people who have a conflict of interest and then say, well, they can't, they can't govern because they have a conflict of interest. So uh, it's just a, a concern I have that, that it, it's uh, trying to find a way to, to have the city council be the direct management of the airport in place of the commission is a vital concern. And I think the best way to run it would have the commission doing what it's designed to do. So uh, that's all I really have to say about that. And I, I really applaud you guys on tackling this tough subject and I uh, wish you all well doing it. So, and let's all do it with uh, a good uh, demeanor and everything. So great, have a good, good night. Thank you. Next on the agenda is approval of the meeting minutes from September 20. And I have a motion to accept the minutes. I have one from Tim, second, and from Chris. Roll call on that. Uh, we will start with Adam Gazapian. Yes. Tim Green. Yes. Bill Kutsky. Yes. David Tesh. Yes. 
I vote yes. Chris Crawley. Aye. Next on the agenda is this discussion and roles and responsibilities of the commission staff and airport manager. Turn this over to attorney Jesse Spankowski. Yep, so before uh, Jesse gets going, um, obviously as we've seen over the past uh, few weeks and even months, there've been a magnitude of comments and questions relating to the role of the commission staff and airport manager. Um, City Administrator Boblick, uh, Mayor Craig, and myself felt it would be a benefit to the commission to have City Attorney Spankowski join us tonight uh, to sit in on this discussion, to weigh in on this topic specifically. Um, please note, obviously, uh, Attorney Spankowski represents both the city as well as the commission because we're you know, all here for the same goal. Um, what we are looking to accomplish tonight is to have a clear understanding of the airport commission's powers in relation to the city itself or the council. Um, so before I turn it over to Jesse, I just want to note, obviously, this is discussion only. Um, you know, we're looking to have a produ productive discussion, I'm not looking to, you know, have any arguments or outbursts or anything like that, and they will not be tolerated. Um, I'll turn it over to you, Jesse. I'll try to behave. <laughs> All right, so I, I'll preface this by saying that I really have no idea what questions may be out there. I've had, uh, as far as other than the general question of, of authority and where it lies, I don't know any of the specific issues that, that may be out there. So I may not have every answer right off the tip of my tongue, right on top of mind. Gen generally speaking, airport commission is something that under state law is an optional commission that a government unit can form or not form. I, I don't know of any airports that of, of decent sized communities that don't have airport commissions. I think that's very common. So it's optional, but it's very, very common. So, uh, and Portage is, is like many in that and that the commission exists. I did uh, just for my own education, I tried to go back and look at uh, some of the history of the airport commission ordinance and the second section of the ordinance 2-202 has it's currently numbered that hasn't changed since at least 1990 maybe longer uh, so this ordinance has been on the books for a long time membership section has changed a few times for various reasons uh, and and so we have an ordinance that's been on the books a long time and I've been city attorney for 12 years and up until the last year, uh, the questions of authority and who does what really hadn't, hadn't been brought to any council meetings really or any line of any tree. So, you know, so it's something that's new and uh, it's something that to, to me it's new at least. Uh, and, you know, I think there's probably lots of different ways that communities go about it. One thing that I'll just mention from the beginning is that uh, some of these communities, I don't know if it's a majority, but they have another ordinance that goes along with this uh, airport commission ordinance. They have a airport operations ordinance. That's something I think that even the Bureau of Aeronautics or the DOT has a model ordinance for that type of ordinance. So, so that's something that regardless of what the answers are today, that's something that could possibly be looked at by the commission and ultimately the common council to try to better spell out some of these areas. Obviously, disputes the right word, but there's some question of, of what's happening right now. So, so that's kind of kind of a background of, of how I look at it. Uh, the statute. I mean, I, I was at a meeting, council meeting, down three four meetings ago, where Mr. Becker came in and read it off, and it is. It is what it is. It says that the airport commission has complete and exclusive control of the airport for which has been appointed. And then there's the caveat the, that says that any act exercise of authority by the commission uh, not binding on, on the governmental unit unless it's approved by the governmental unit. Well, that's kind of a kind of a dichotomy then that, that's created is uh, how at what point uh, you know, how much authority do our ordinances provide the airport commission to act on their own versus the council having to approve these acts as they go one by one. I think it's unquestionable that the, that the city council could adopt an ordinance that says the 
the airport commission is in charge of all leases of hangar that the rates and responsibilities there thereof and that could be done that would be an express authority but we don't have that right now we have we have something that says that they can control the management of the authority but the, the contract needs to be approved by the governmental unit so who's really in charge it's not it's not really well defined uh, that's my opinion uh, the council has that caveat that they have to approve the contract right now it comes to the council at least partially to approve the form of the contract i know there's other parts to go along with it and that's kind of i mean i think that's kind of the way it is for for most things really there's some things that i don't think the council has anything to do with the operating rules of the airport you know as far as I'm not a pilot, so you guys will have to forgive me when I, when I talk about this stuff, but if you're talking about where the tie-down areas are, I don't think the council is going to have anything to do with that. Uh, thing, things of what type of, uh, type of rules there are for how uh, certain things might be scheduled, you know, uh, maintenance by the, by the manager, things like that. The council doesn't get into the day-to-day -day operations. Those, or the manager and then the council and then the commission would have one level of, of the ability to set some policies and rules of, of things that, that the manager that are consistent with the operation of the airport. So the actual what are the planes doing out there on, on the landing areas, the tie down areas, possibly hangars. I don't I don't really know. That's you do have the ordinance that says that the expenditures they have it says that basically the council it sets the sets the budget so it's like many committees and departments in the city where the department says we want x amount of dollars the council and the finance committee they look at it and say okay let's see what we can do and then you come up with a budget number within that budget i think the airport commission can decide how to spend that money pretty much however they want if it's over five thousand dollars, then it says it's supposed to be approved by council resolution. That's the, I guess, the caveat on the ability on the money, however they want. To add to that, um, that's an item later on in tonight's agenda is us going through the 2024 operating budget, which has come to this body um, prior. However, the the committee that formally um, pushes that forward to council is the city finance committee. Um, so what we're doing is going to look at the parameters that they've set forth and then make any modifications as needed. However, the, the parameters for increase have been set by the controlling body. Yeah, and the uh, ordinances are also clear that, that the uh, staff of the city is supposed to be a resource to the commission, specifically Phil, or Phil can get others involved as needed. So, I guess I'd, I don't really have anything else in specific structure. I'm happy to try to answer questions. Adam. Okay. So, um, you mentioned airport operating ordinance. Is that an HLZO ordinance or is that a different ordinance from the HLZO? That's the height limitation ordinance? Yeah, right. different. Different. Really different. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, I could, and we could probably get some examples. I know I was, I mentioned Gary, uh, Reedsburg has something mm -hmm. like that. I was just making sure we we're on the same page with that. You said, so the manager's policy and rules are set by the commission, so the commission oversees the manager? Not not so much the manager, but, but the, if you want to de de designate a portion of the airport for some high downs or something. So you said the policy and rules. I don't. Do you have those? I don't even know. I you're, you're talking again. The wrong guy. About yeah. The well, I think that's. I think that's funny that you know. Got to have pilots on the airport commission. To understand what we're talking about. Yet, we're told that pilots are conflict. In some cases, um, I I don't think that anybody here, staff level, uh, council level. It's not, you know, hey, we're, we're against pilots being on the commission.
commission. That's that's not the case at no, all. No, I just I think that pilots ought to be on the commission, and I think pilots ought to be able to make decisions. Now, you in a meeting we did dis discuss that there could be you have the appearance of conflicts, and then you have actual conflicts. There could always be an appearance of a conflict, but what I want to see is you know if there isn't there. Everything could appear like it's a conflict. When you have people, uh, there was a, a city council member that sat over there um, and he spoke about how he didn't want to see properties that did not have, already have sidewalks on both sides. If it was a corner lot, you only wanted to see sidewalks put on one so there was no undue burden on that taxpayer for two sets of sidewalks. And lo and behold, that council member lived on a corner lot without sidewalks. He was speaking to the same same piece of property that he had. That's a clear conflict, but that comment was made. I think what, if there's a, uh, anything can look like a conflict when you have a pilot at, that works at the airport. But if I, I my, issue, my issue there is, we have to have pilots on the commission to understand the details of it. As long as the pilots don't abuse that, I think that's a case by case basis. There is one case I can clearly see it was brought to my attention. There's a clear conflict. And at that point, that person should take themselves out of that conflict. But just deciding day to day operations that affect prices or operations, you. I think that needs to, that's a question that needs to be had is what is a, are all of these conflicts issues? Um, I don't. I don't think. I don't think that if it's. And this gets into council deals with it all the time. If you're setting a tax rate, that affects you directly, right? Budget the mill rates. Yep. If you, you may be a person who's that, but everybody uses that. You're talking about like the rate of uh, you wanted to build a new hangar in the airport and you want to negotiate the price something related to that. You know, not sure. Or that, yep. Maybe and renting a hangar. I mean, there's certain things. I think there's right. Like there's certain direct things. I think if if I want to build a hangar and I want to negotiate the hangar lease rate, I can see that being a conflict. Um, you had said the. Topics have been brought up the governing body. I don't think anybody here wants to have unfettered control of money from the city. I think that everybody here wants to be responsible with the money, with the taxpayers' money, and use that through the air the, the city council. So I don't when when we say we want to, if if the airport commission were to be the governing body that could sign the uh, contract or make a budget or spend money, we're not looking to take control of finances but you know the, the airport commission can't contract with the manager the manager works directly under public work we the manager all of all of those operations when i look at this these these ordinances and maybe the governing body change if if the city council were to give the authority to sign some of these contracts and these operations to the airport commission. Would the city still hold mm -hmm. on to control of the, the at the end of the day, um, the finances, right? That the, the chair should come to the city council, just like parks and rec does. And just like other, other groups do in the city to explain themselves. Why are you spending this money? I think that's, that's responsible, but I, I think it is a disservice to the airport and it's hard on the airport commission or sorry, the city council for the city to have to take on all of these tasks when it comes to hangar leases, fuel purchases, manager contract, manager dispute, all things that come through the airport, the commission only does it here. Is it possible to make that governing body airport commission without giving it Uh, yes, it is possible. Uh, exactly, it would be that. With 
that in the ordinance that say the council delegates authority to enter into the manager's contract. Could do that. Okay. And uh, of course, the city council at the same time would say do the contract, but not unlimited. So then, then the other side, as as the airport commission's attorney, your interpretation of this, who is who who is the direct supervisor of the airport manager? It would depend on council, wouldn't it? So as it has been, not really a manager. But you're right, it's between the city and, and the contractor, how it has been. That, that, that's the way it has been. I don't know what the new contract says. It's a, typically, the, the contract has been a direct report to the director. So if, if, the, if the city council were to delegate the authority of writing the manager's contract to the airport commission, the airport commission then could be in charge of yeah i mean could certainly could be lots of options out there right that would be if it was delegated to sure and i understand that if if they don't want to delegate it but it, as i as i look at what we do and what we can do i mean we can't even um can't negotiate a manager's contract. We can't go into closed session to discuss sensitive. Because we're not the governing body, if I want to talk about the competitive nature of this manager's contract, details around that, we can't even go into closed session on that topic. Go into it as a body to discuss it. If, if it was on the agenda to discuss the manager's contract and the details of that in closed session, because it is a competitive thing, we have other businesses at other airports that would would like to see this not work. Yeah. Or so if we That's wanted to, yeah, so if so we wanted to go as this body wanted to go into close, I asked if we could go into closed session so I could discuss some topics of this manager's agreement, and I was told that it, I was told that we could not, and if we did, city staff would leave because it would be illegal for us. So there are things on here that I can't talk about with everybody outside of this room because it would be a walking quorum. And I can't talk about in here because it's being recorded and then all of those things get out there and we're trying to protect the airport and the city. And the way to do that is to make this airport managers opportunities as strong as they can be. But if, if we're giving our, if we're showing our hand to everybody, our hands are tied. So that's the problem I see. And it, to, to your point, you said you know nothing about, not nothing, but your your knowledge on aviation is limited. I rode in a plane, okay. small small aircraft. So well. <laughs> it's not, not just not it's, just commercial. It's no. it's a it's it's a limited knowledge, where there are some specific details that only the um, the, the people with conflicts, the aviators, the pilots would know about. And so I, th I think we're at, a, we're at a disadvantage here because we can't even, these details, the, the, the things that we should be discussing, we can't even do. And I, th yeah, I think we, and sorry. To go so is, is it, without getting the delegated authority to be a governing body, is it possible for us to go into closed session? Adi, what we have done on system. Airport Commission and Finance would meet together. Act, you know, act on it. Would, would and I guess it's not so much negotiating with the other side. Some questions would, would be nice, but or some answers to some questions would be nice. I don't think that Transport Aviation would want to divulge to the public. But there's just some questions as far as the structure of it and the way it's designed that I think would be better suited because we have two, two, two things. Number one, we need to make sure that we protect Sunsport Aviation from its competitors. But we also need to make sure that we are protecting the taxpayer and the city 
from Sunsport Aviation. That's our job. We need to make sure that we are at an advantage. We don't want to put ourselves in a competitive or into a contractual disadvantage to Sunsport Aviation. And although I think this is a great opportunity, Sunsport Aviation, I think we need to be able to go into closed session to discuss the nuances of this that the city council would not know, but we can't do that because we don't have that delegated authority. And that's the problem. And if I may add to that, um, what you're referencing, that competitive nature of the contract and what you know the potential contract tour would be bringing to the city doesn't have any doesn't have anything to do with the contract itself. The contract is written as a as a grounds contract between the city and FBO at that point. They are typically allowed to operate business ventures on city grounds, but the city's involvement in that is is somewhat limited. We can't write a contract that says, you know, you're going to provide this service, this service, and this service outside of, you know, what is respective to the grounds themselves at the airport. So any of those extras that would be the competitive advantage of, of the contractor don't really play a part in the contract itself, if you follow that. I'm not talking about... I do understand what you're saying, and it's not so much the forcing of, of those things, but it's minimum standards. Um, the, the way the contract, we discussed this, how it would be reoccurring. Um, those are things that, you know, I like this, but I think the city should have a, the city should have a leg up on any contractor it brings in. Correct, and the, the city, city brings this contract forward to the council to make that decision. But if we discuss the strategy of a contract here in a public setting, he knows exactly the details that we're going to try to change and why. I don't think, I don't think you're, uh, when you're trying to contract, that person that you're trying to contract with, you want to tell them exactly why. Let them wonder why, but you want to negotiate and we want to be able to help the city at, at sure in that best contract in normal circumstances yes but we're not talking about negotiations here i guess we're we're, we're talking about yeah we are one example that i would give you um would be pricing right so again i'm sure this is a conflict because i rent the hangar but i want to discuss what the value of that hangar is not just this year as a business starts up, but in years later, as a business becomes more uh, financially stable and builds, the city should be, the city is giving this business an opportunity. It's, it, you can't just go around every corner and hop on an airport and be an FBO, right? And there's a lot of money that these taxpayers are putting into that. This person's putting money in too, but I think we should discuss how we can modify that contract to best suit the city and its taxpayers since so we can generate possibly generate more revenue off it with the business but that would be contracting how we could get money from said business if that business does well and if we're discussing that i think that's something that you'd want to discuss in private i don't i don't think you'd want to do that so he's listening to to, to that to those things let me give you an example because clearly I'm not we're not tracking. <clears throat> that hangar goes for 1200 a month or 1200 a year per per plane, right? We got two planes in there. Could you get four in there? Sure. What is that worth to the city? Well, as much as the city can get for it, I think. But if we want to try to prop this company up in the short term, that's great. We need to discuss in, in year three, four, five, six, how we can, year two, how we can try to generate more revenue off of off of what the city owns, off of its assets. And those are things I, I think maybe they, they should be negotiated 
or talked about discussed in a public setting. I just, I, I don't think it is. Um, so I guess that's what it comes down to is if we can't discuss anything in a public setting or in a private setting, it's, it's, we can't take charge of all affairs, management, prepare. I mean, a lot of these things, it's, it's impossible for us to do that in a competitive when I say competitive, I'm not just talking financial negotiating way. We, 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 we should have an upper hand, especially we have an airport. The city of Portage has an airport. Everybody doesn't have that. We should take advantage of that. Not just this business has opportunity, but the city has opportunity. And you didn't know about this ordinance up until a year ago. And I knew about it. I just it hadn't been revised in 32 years. It, yeah, the, the details of it maybe not have been on the top of your mind, but just, just because we haven't been doing things the right way for 30 years, clearly things have been done wrong for 30 years. I think we need to try to find a way. And again, nobody I've talked to wants the airport commission to have control over more money. I think what it is is the airport commission has the experience to deal with these topics um, with more knowledge and not going through the city council just doesn't have the time. I mean, I'll, I'll leave it there for now, but I, I, I just think the airport commission needs to be able to have more latitude in, in going into uh, discussing and helping the people that understand this help guide the city council. Other discussion? Chris. City council has all, <clears throat> has all the time you want, Adam, as long as you have prices and plans laid out. We'll take the, everything up for consideration as long as it's laid out. But we can't even get things put on the agenda uh, to discuss those prices and plans. I mean, perfect example, hangar. I asked over a month ago to how I can get a hangar built. Nothing. Uh, Airport Commission can't get that on the agenda because it goes through Plan Commission. You know, we can't even discuss how to get approvals through Plan Commission. We can't get it on the agenda. Is that something we can do here now to put it on the next agenda? At the end of it, we can try again. But those are, I, those are the things that we have is we can't even... We can't even discuss these topics. We can't discuss them outside, really, because there's a, the risk of a walking quorum. So we have to discuss them here. And there's there's a lot going on with this airport that wasn't going on a year ago or two years ago or five years ago. There are so many things. Dave Tesh, <laughs> we didn't go there to discuss the airport, but this uh, the Oak Field, the Air Force Base in uh, Camp Douglas was open on Sunday, so we flew in. They put on a presentation with the DOT and the FA, uh, DOA and the DOT. And there are so many programs that are put out there for, I mean, we are leaving more than just entitlement money on the table. There are massive opportunities. But without being able to discuss these things here and moving forward, we're in, we're in tough shape. I mean, because we can't even put any, we can't even present anything to the city council. <clears throat> and I, I'd like to kind of get some clarification on that because the agendas are set on a monthly basis in coordination between the chair and myself and city staff. That's how all of our committees and commissions are set up at a city level. Um, you have two chairs sitting here currently of two separate committees or commissions and I think that they'd be the first ones to tell you that we go back and forth on those agenda items um, and if an item is needed to go on the agenda and there's discussion only yeah, we can certainly add that to the agenda I think part of the action items that we have that are difficult to push forward are because there's other components to them that are delaying that process 
correct me if I'm wrong, Barry, but you know, we, we do go back and forth on the agenda each month. Dennis, I'm sure you can state the same for municipal services. Yep. I, I do want to say on that part of it, I asked some, for something to be put on this agenda at the end of last meeting, not on the agenda. We, we can ask for stuff to be on put on the agenda, but whether it gets on the agenda or not is confusing to me because I asked for it to be put on the agenda. And it was never put on the agenda. Sure. And I think that is a good point. Discussion, but Thanks, Mr. Barry. We know you've explained the 30 days because you, you got to research stuff. We understand you know, a lot of things you didn't get on. Now, there has been change because you're working with us a lot better. We have a new administration that hopefully doesn't tie us like this. Like, we're not allowed to do anything. We felt like little, we just come here and, you know, hey, how's it going? Let's go through this. And the person would say, no, you can't do that. No, you can't. That's the feeling the people on the commission are getting. You're working with us a lot better, which is highly appreciated, especially with Michael. Uh, he seems to understand it. That's the way of the frustration from where people on the commission and other was they wanted to get this. They didn't ask even probably before you were here, and it was just shot down. And hopefully we can see an improvement in that, which we are, but it can get better. And I think if the communication, you know, it's like the five words you said to us when we got when you started talking here for the same goal. I don't come here unpaid for years to sit on this commission to help the city. None of us do. We want to help the city. We aren't getting paid. We're not here for our health. Let us be part of it and bring our knowledge that you got us on this commission for. Help the city and help the airport. We're here to help the airport get millions of dollars that are sitting out there waiting just to make the city better. That's all we're trying to do. We just want to feel like we're more part of it because we're here for the same goal that's all so you hit so microphone bill as i read that confidentiality document that says when we can go into confidential session when we're talking about competitive issues we'd like to be, you've, you've got to have that opportunity if you don't have that opportunity we should just sit here and uh, pass whatever whatever comes in. But there are things that you want to talk about. We want all we really want to do is move the city forward and have a good airport that's expanding. Uh, we want to see more ops. We want to see more activity. We want to see um, uh, we want to take steps that can reduce the cost that the city is paying here for keeping the airport open. We think there's some opportunities, but some of that has to be. Uh, a private conversation to see whether we think that any of that can be financed, to, th to see how we would finance it, what the plan is, how we could do it. We obviously have to go back into open session to pass a resolution to do X, Y, or Z, or whatever it is, but we got to make sure that we got, we've, we've had the, conver the competitive conversation because we, this airport competes with 72 other airports in Wisconsin. And there's some things in here that you've got to talk about to see whether it's feasible to start looking at that issue and putting in the time and effort. And I think some of the people like uh, David and Adam and former pilots are willing to do that work. And they're willing to do it for the commission to do the evaluation, but you've got to have a discussion of where that went. Then we can act, we can act on it. We can have a public discussion, but if you tell us that the only thing we can do is uh, write a letter to the or write a letter to the newspaper and uh, uh, see if we can get somebody to think about it. That's that's the problem I think we think we're facing here. That we're we're trying to uh, uh, do some things without a working without it in a real setting where the commissioners are discussing what can be done uh, and what they're prepared to take on if necessary. As compared to saying, 
that's those are issues that you just can't discuss in public, no matter how you set it up. And if if you can't do it, I mean, we shouldn't be doing it. We should just sit back here and get a big rubber stamp and stamp it and go home. Yeah, and and I guess uh, this happens not. It's not just the airport commission that deals with this. It happens in plan commission certainly also where plan commission is in charge of reviewing certain things and making recommendations to the council. Maybe it's related to a development agreement, but it's, there's some tension there because plan commission is not the body that approves the development agreements. It's the council that does. Mm -hmm. So same, same sorts of things happen where sometimes the plan commission can't meet in closed session. They have to go over the plans in open session uh, because, uh, because that's, that's the, Exceptions under open records, open meetings law only apply to, uh, you know, at least the bargaining negotiation one really only apply to the decision making body. It, it can, I think, for something like this, I mean, I maybe it's outside the box, but I don't see why you couldn't have a finance with the airport commission joint meeting for us for, uh, to discuss airport contract. If I was on the finance commission, I'm have people there that know a little bit more. But I, I guess I get, and I wonder too, I mean, if you met in closed session, and discussed the contract, how are you gonna communicate that to? We're gonna, we're gonna uh, adopt a resolution at the end that says <coughs> these are the elements we want in the contract. And we'll be very clear about that. We're perfectly fine doing that sort of thing. But the question is, will this change, this approach, help our competitiveness, help us achieve the objectives that we want. That's the, that's the key. I mean, it's not like we're hiding anything. You're trying to figure out what might work that can be, uh, uh, that's worth pursuing as a group. Can you clarify the, the resolution aspect of that? Because that, when that we come out, when we come out of closed session, be a, when we be a resolution. Well, when we come out of closed session, Doc Reimer has always taught me uh, we've got to have a resolution that uh, puts forward where we're going from here so that, and so that you can have a discussion. Of a what a recommendation. Well, what it's, it's a, what it, whatever you want to call it, a recommendation from the commission, commission resolution, whatever, you, it doesn't, same thing, because we're asking somebody to do something. We're asking for approval. We're not hiding anything. But you got to have some way of having a uh, work session, if you will, where you can discuss what it is and what direction you're going to go. Uh, we don't have anybody. Uh, some of this stuff really shouldn't be public. There, there are issues that I see with this contract that I'd be happy to like to discuss with some of the other commissioners. I don't think that discussion should be in public for a variety of reasons, which you'd understand if you went into the confidential session. Uh, if we're going to do it publicly and everything is public, I, it's, better, I, it's better to sit quiet with a rubber stamp. I presume you mean to make it public later when you're not. Well, whatever you decide. When to the about. decision has been Maybe made. Maybe that a discussion of the issue says there is no issue. Uh, it may be that it. it want to twist it a little bit like this and that's what the best outcome is will be most competitive for the city we got a whole bunch of those kinds of issues because this is a we're, we're really talking about a business that the city is in operating the airport uh, and some of that stuff be careful about how you discuss at the public works department or the you know the services on the street So we're going to increase our takeoffs and landings at the airport. How we're going to, how we're going to encourage businesses. Then we're going to turn it over to somebody else. I mean, if we have a better idea, we aren't necessarily the implementer. Yes. Dennis, you had your hand up. If, if, you, if you can remember what it was. <laughs> but I do, I, I, one item, I, I do want to comment, Adam, on this hangar. 
I don't think that you have that that you have that straight on this hanger. I think you were very specifically told that night of what process you have to do to get a hanger to go to plan commission. Now, I don't know that that would come up on under our agenda per se. If I want to build a hanger out there, the first person I'd get a hold of is Steve Soyak because, and then you ask him what he needs for this to go to plan commission because this isn't something you're going to be able to go into the plan commission without a piece of paper and say, I want to build a hangar and you're going to get approval for it. you got to have a plan. you got to have, you know, where are you going to put it? Uh, you know, th there's a lot of information, a lot more information than I can give you. But Steve would be able to tell you point by point by point of what you need to take to the plan commission. He would do that for you. I don't know that we told you to get a hold of Steve, but I don't think we shut the door on that that night by no stretch. I didn't take it like we were doing that. Uh, so let me finish. So that's, you know, that that what we would tell anybody that wanted to do anything in this city that needs plan commission approval is, but as far as agenda items, I, I think this can be cleared up pretty easy. And we do it at other committee levels. At the end of the meeting, there can be no discussion on it, but we ask everybody on the commission here, is there anything you would like to see on the agenda for the next meeting? And then that goes on the agenda. You know, it, I, I mean, I've dealt with Phil since he's been in, since he's been uh, an employee of the city of Portage. And I cannot believe that he just, you know, Adry said, no, I ain't putting that on the agenda. <clears throat> I, I just, I, nobody will convince me of that, you know? So I think that if it's him or me or uh, anyone here, if at the end of the meeting, we say, you know, here's what we would like to have on the next agenda. And that's given Phil 30 days to research it. Uh, it might be that he comes back and he says, I haven't had time to do it, you know? And I mean, it's got to, but it can stay on the agenda. So, so that part I think is easily fixed sure. amongst us. In response to your item last month, Tim, that's kind of a, a broad topic that I think is encompassed in what we're talking about right now. Yeah, that's all of it is. So, and like, I, I didn't want to say that you left it off purposely. I was hoping that it was just an oversight and, and get put on there, but well, I, I took it as what we're kind of talking about right now. Okay. Um, you know, we have many of times where uh, Barry will come with a proposed agenda, and we're able to consolidate some of those items. You know, hey, you have item two and three here. Really, item three is going to be discussed in item two. We, we go over that, you know, quite often. If I'm being honest, yes, yes, okay. and. And I will give specific, you know, suggestions, and Phil will then say to me, "This is broad enough. We can make it in a broad enough discussion in some other agenda item." As you, I got a, I got a cut one. Okay. Yes, Adam. So we talked about the hangers. Um, September 20th after the meeting and let's I want to start this Bill does a good job always on things for the most part and honestly when I'm after I'm done talking to him I feel like I wish I was smarter um, so though I'm not putting Phil down he's got a, a pretty difficult uh, job but on the 20th that night after the meeting Phil told me to email him and start that connection on the 20th i emailed phil please let me know what information you and steve will be looking for to provide prior to the initial meeting on an airport hangar i've received nothing the problem i have with that is every other airport that's looking for growth you can be shovel ready 30 days and that i have nothing and that's not i get it we're trying to move forward but that's the problem we have is I asked what information they need so they can we can start that that dialogue and we just don't have it. But in response to that, I, I'm working on setting up a meeting between you, me, and Mr. Sobiak specifically. You've said that 
between time, but the, the problem I have is I want to see this airport to the point where when a business comes in, they can look at us, they can look at the Dells, and they can be like 30 days either way. We know what it's going to cost. We know what they're going to ask of us because it is a very tough thing for businesses, for CapEx, capital expenses, to put a building on a piece of property they don't own and then start paying that city with a lot of strings attached. That's a that's a tough deal for a lot of businesses. So we don't want to make it too tough. We also don't want to let them think about it too much either. We want them to get that money put on the ground and they can start paying revenue. But I think the, the big thing here is how do we get, at the end of the day, my goal is to make, I want to push so the airport commission can take a larger role in the airport operations, day-to-day -day decisions. I think the FBO and the manager could, could be different people, but I think they should report to the commission not to the city staff how do we get to the as the attorney for the airport commission what do we need to do to go to the city and i'm not asking for money but i think to my point you have a tough job phil i think that the airport commission is better suited to take on what is going to be a very monumentous a, a huge task going after all of this BOA and FAA funding. These projects are gonna take a long time and I, I think it is in the best interest of the city to have a group of active pilots, business owners, city council members, all together being able to make decisions that are benefiting the city. What do we need to do? What? How do we go to the city council get that, ask them if, if they're okay with that, and then start negotiating or discussing the restrictions on that. Because we, I like the people that are here. But 10 years from now, I might not like the people that are here. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> we don't, we want to make sure that we don't give this airport commission too much power for when the next people come either and all of a sudden there's there's that give and take right so how, as as the airport commission attorney what do we need to do how do we start that process to see how the city council feels about the airport commission yeah i mean i think kind of actually circles back to where we started I, and the fact that the ordinance hasn't been updated in 32 years is probably not a good thing and i think that the way that most communities, is, from what I could tell, that are, are walking the line of doing that is through that airport operations ordinance. That would be my recommendation. As the mission looks at some communities that have these airport operation ordinances. It's a feel for what's what's in those because they cover. They're it's not a simple ordinance. or multiple pages, rules and regulations and parameters that are delegated off the council's plate, sometimes entirely, sometimes just partially. Uh, that's an ordinance, so the council has to adopt it. And that's how they buy in, is by adopting the ordinance. And I mean, to be fair, the there are ordinances out there when you're talking about membership of the, of the airport commissions that they don't, they're not worried. They're, in fact, they specifically say, we want at least two people that rent hangars or have hangars at the airport. I'm not concerned about about the that conflict of interest. Only if it's a specific conflict, then they should just recuse themselves for that one vote. Well, that part you'll definitely see that in some of these ordinances too, where it's even a requirement they have to have an airport airplane at the airport. So it's a big task to to look at these ordinances because they probably make sense to you when you read through and say. You know, which one, it's probably not everything will apply to the airport. The airport's different, so you can add it on or struck out. Work on that ordinance as a group here. Have that on your agenda, talk about it. So there's a boilerplate one that? The yeah, the DO, the, or the DOA or DOT, one of the two has a model ordinance. So the other question I would have, the city is in tough financial shape. The last thing that I want council members to think, or residents to think, is that 
We're trying to take power to take money. Are we better off discussing this airport operations ordinance here and then going to the city council? Or are we better off us having our chair go to the city council? Us that point of order would be uh, obviously anything that goes to the council is typically off of a recommendation from a commission or a committee. Um, in this case, I'm not sure if that ordinance change that would that have to go through Leg and Reg or could that come directly from? I can wreck. Most of them do. We have some exceptions that I mean ordinances just go to the I don't I don't even know who's the chair of like and right So I mean some I think sometimes there's some want to take this and they say Phil's right, it should come at least from some recommendation for this commission. We're fortunate we have three council members here. Is this something that the city council uh, airport operations ordinance that would kind of centralize, centralize, delineate, uh, and give the airport commission a little more of the day to day? Not so much, hey, we need 100,000 cities that apply. You know, I look at there's airports where the city's a charter. City basically tells the airport commission, your budget's going to be 48,000. Make it work. If you can make it work, you make it work. If you can't, you're going to have, someone's going to have to come to the city or the finance and say, we can't do it, but they make it work. However they do it, that's how they do it. I think, and the finance committee did a great job. I was there listening to it. You guys did great. I think some of those discussions should be had in here, specifics of where some of that money should Oh, and I think trying to save a little money once in a while, not a bad idea. Um, but what is what would the city council's position be? Airport commission starting to develop an airport operation. You can speak for that. Can't speak for everybody. So. Um, there's, there's things that I've, I've, I've looked at and talked to other people about with other airports, um, that we're not doing and I'd, I'd like to see changed. Um, for one is a budget. Our budget right now is commingled with public works. A little bit of hangar, hangar rent here, a little bit of this here, a little bit I would prefer myself to see budget line by line where you have your incomes, your fuel, your hangar leases, whatever incomes you have, then your expenses, your fuel, your hangar, maintenance, and all that kind of stuff. I truly believe that work it right, airport could make Maybe not make money, but not cost the city. Or the city could be putting a little bit into it. Um, and I don't know. I I got this 15 minutes before we started this meeting today, so I don't know what's all in this contract. I haven't had a chance to look at it. detailing. But these kind of things, the contracts, I think, should come through this council or through this committee. Again. I think these contracts should come through the, the committee. Um, because, you know, from what I'm understanding, and Phil, you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, this is all drawn up by you. And no, so what, what that is, that's uh, an RFP response. Yeah. Um, so it's not the not the contract. Not the contract. Yep. Does the contract still come to us to look at? It goes to the council, the council um, because the the contract is between the FBO and the city, not the airport commission. And and that's that's and, and that's kind of Adam's point is that he should be reporting to the airport commission 
not directly to you. You have enough on your plate. I mean, um, but some of those things, those are kind of some of the things that I've seen that I've heard about in, in conversations, like some airports, the commission has their own checkbook. So you have a budget, this is your budget, $50,000 or $100,000, whatever your budget is. And you have to go line by line on what you're gonna spend as long as you stay in it. I mean, maybe the finance director still handles the checkbook, not Barry having a checkbook to write checks, but, um, but as long as you follow your budget, just like any other department, good. If you have to change your budget, change something, you ask for more money, you have to go to finance to, to get it figured out. That's kind of what I'm. Yep, and that's, that's I'm currently thinking. the case with the operational budget up to that $5,000 limit. Except for they don't have any control. Eric does over. not come to me on a monthly basis and, you know, or the commission and say, hey, I need to do this, that, or the other. He goes and handles those operations, buys toilet paper, buys, yeah. you know, uh, fuel filters, et cetera, because operational budget has already been approved. Yeah, that's, that's, I, I'd just like to see a broader scope of that, that budget because. You're saying when the we, expenditures? When we discussed this before, operational expenditures. So that five thousand dollar limits on the manager, not yes. the airport commission. So this right here it says the board of airport commissioners shall authorize expenditures. But you're saying so any expend according to this ordinance, any expenditure under five thousand dollars, the airport commission shall authorize those expenditures. And you you just told me now that. Eric authorizes those unilaterally. I mean, do, would you like to see yeah. toilet paper invoices come forth 100%. to this commission yep. each yep. month? It's taxpayer money, 100%. I got no problem dealing with that. I don't think anybody here is, we're not short on time as if our time is appreciated. Um, and, and we can authorize, we could authorize the airport manager to say, hey, you, you can spend X amount of dollars a year on toilet paper. Let's not talk about it till next year. But I think that's something the airport commission can discuss, not just the manager. And it's it's not that we spent too much on toilet paper last year, but it's the fact that there are sometimes just bad decisions are made. And when you have a group of people, there's a little more. I, I just I, and we should also follow our ordinance. Um, one question is, if we do go forward with an airport operations ordinance. We start moving that forward. Is there a mechanism that we could that can be put in that the city would be able? Hey, the airport commission just starts doing an awesome job. No, the chair, the chairman, I hope not. the chair won't go to a council meeting to answer for what he's doing. Is there is there a mechanism that the city council can put in that can they can take that power back if their commission goes rogue? Yeah, I mean, typically, if it's already hope that fairly comprehensive. And then, so would that airport operations ordinance also change the way? Would that be how would it would the way that people are nominated and put on this commission be part of that as well? Typically, that's typically separate from the membership. The only reason I ask is because sometimes if you got one or two bad people, you know, guys that just cause problems, you can get rid of them yeah. easier. Yeah, yeah. I mean the. Uh, At any time. That's and that's that's the good part about that is if, if you if there's just one or two bad on the commission side, I don't I mean it's the city's it's the city's commission. Right. If the city city residents the mayor appoints us. Yeah. Yes. And if yes. the mayor wants to take us off, one of us for whatever reason maybe doesn't like the way I'm I think that's fine. He's respond he, he's responsible for his constituents. Thank you. See Alderman, he's only appointed for one year. I don't believe the commission members, non-Alderman commissioners, 
you're appointed for longer than you, for three years. That would take, you know, in the year and a half, I don't know that the mayor could just say, well, I don't want to add him on here anymore. I want him off. And the council would vote on and say, you're off. Because you've been appointed for three. I, I would think there would have to be a formality that he would have to go through to give just reasons why. You don't know, there's not 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 for he could just get rid of them. Well the council would have to council would have to vote. And I think I think that's great. I mean, because the thing is, not knocking Dave Tesh, he doesn't live in the city. He doesn't pay taxes in the city. If he's not looking out for the best interest of the city, the city ought to be able to get rid of him. That's part of the membership, though, is uh, one member not being part of the. We get another one. Yeah, we sure. just get another one. Not, not. It's just that's my example of it. Um, one thing, Adam, Dave, you David, you're staying. <laughs> our commission used to be less members. We changed that, say, five years ago, whatever, to include. Because at one time we couldn't have non-city residents in it. Right. The problem with it is we couldn't get a quorum. That was two years we ago. Couldn't get enough of them to come to have a meeting. So we increased the membership so so we could get a so we get a quorum. We had a couple committees like that. We had, Bill, I think you were on the council then uh, when we increased that because we couldn't get a quorum. And without a quorum, you can't have a meeting. Right. And I and that's the that so we're, we're I want I want to narrow this down, folks. We're going all over the place. These are excellent conversations. And before I get to you, Chris, because I do want to do that, I want to get to the audience and tell you that I have been told by one commission member who had a meeting with the mayor this last week that, yes, there was going to be public opportunity to speak. I was told that the mayor was going to be here tonight. He is not here tonight. I don't know the ruling on allowing the audience to speak. If it's on the agenda and you and the chair recognizes that person to speak, that person can speak. It's sure. not on the agenda. I'd like to yield my time to the young lady in the audience that's been waiting to speak. Thank you. Welcome. Come up to the podium. Chris, I just want to warn you, by doing that, you're done talking now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> she's, she's been waiting. Thank, thank you for your patience. I wanted to explain that. Barry, you should have them come to the front so we can hear them come to the podium. My name, my name is Brian Becker again. I, I just wanted to, to state a couple things to maybe I think this would clear a lot of these problems up that you guys are having. There's a state statute that marries directly with the city ordinance. So as far as I read it, the state statute details the areas that are, are silent in the city ordinance. And the, the, the E states in the city, in the state statute that the commission shall have complete and exclusive control and management over the airport for which it has been appointed. So that exclusivity means they're the only ones who can lease that property. So the, you have exclusive rights to that area. Now, the other thing is that in the Roberts rule states that if you guys control the agenda of your, of your stuff, this body does. By Roberts rules, if, if one of you wants to put it on the agenda, when you, because the agenda doesn't get officially enacted until you approve it before the meeting, right before the meeting. Otherwise, it's just an, a proposed agenda. And this body approves that agenda. And if one of you wants to put something on it, you can do so with a second and it gets put on that agenda. That's Robert's rules. So I would hope that this body would function that way. And one last thing is that, I like you, Phil, but you serve at the, at the behest or at the, at the will of the king, so to speak, that, the, that these guys here need you as a resource. This body is not a resource for you. You're a resource for them. If there's a topic these guys want to discuss and you can't prepare quick enough, well, I guess I'll just function without your resource because that's what this body does. So that that lease agreement stuff, it specifically states that this body can go into contracts with, it says employ a manager, employ and fix compensation, all those things that you're supposed to do. 
that would allow you to go into, into private session. Because now you guys, according to state statute, are the, the body that's controlling that. You have exclusive right to that. I have two questions for you, Brian. What, what is the state statute that you're citing? It's uh, <clears throat> section 114.14. And what is the ordinance date on the paper in your hand? Well, I just printed it off today, off of the state statute site. So, and the bottom of there, there should be a date that that ordinance went into the, so city. the state statute. No, the city. I'm talking about the ordinance for the city. Well, the city ordinance is very short. Okay, you don't have the date on that. Yeah, the date on that is I just printed it off 10 18 23. Yeah, it's a 19. Okay, but I mean, that's, oh, I see, 1990 for that ordinance. But the state statute still governs the body as well, I believe. It's not like just because you have a small little ordinance means the state statute goes away. You want me to respond? I, I don't know. I switch what fours, yeah. Yeah, so this person is right. There is, everything he stated is correct, although he left out the exception that says the exercise of authority by the Air Com Airport Commission under paragraph A shall be subject to all the following conditions, one of which includes no act, contract, lease, or any activity of the airport commission shall be or become a binding contract on any government unit, which is the city, unless expressly authorized, and then only to the extent so expressly authorized. So how do you form a lease with somebody if you don't have the authority of the city to do it? They have exclusive right to that property, the whole airport, okay, everything so on that. I disagree. I mean, okay. it's clear to me that it says you can't do this unless the city authorizes sure. it. And then, then that authorization would come through an airport operation ordinance. It certainly could. It, 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 would, yeah. it would appear then that this the statute has no teeth whatsoever. And it's- Well, it, well one thing you got to realize too is this yeah. is, again, it's, a, it's an optional commission, right? So the city doesn't have to have an airport commission at all. If they were dumb enough to think that the older persons could understand everything about aviation themselves, they could do it without a commission. I mean, that's, that's the reality. It's totally optional. And with optional committees, usually you have layers of delegation that you give that committee. Like, for example, the city's plan commission has the authority to approve certified survey maps. Not every city does that. Some certified survey maps come all the way to the city council and they have to approve every single one. Same thing with public hearings on certain issues. Plan Commission handles that because it was delegated by the city. Well, one thing that I think that he's wrong on, besides what you're saying he's wrong on, uh, is that, <clears throat> yes, we approve the agenda. We cannot add to that agenda and then it be discussed that night. Right. That is, we cannot do that. That, that, yeah. that, that has to be because that has to be by notice to the paper and everything else and whatnot, you said that we could add to that agenda and we could discuss it that night. That is totally false. We cannot do that. If, if, the, if the agenda item is to talk about the lack of ability to put it on the agenda, how would one get it on that? Well, there's a process in the city to do that. I mean, it becomes a little bit cumbersome, but there is because We've, we've encountered that. And yeah. two aldermen <laughs> can take it to the city clerk, sign a piece of paper, and then it has to go on the agenda. There's, there's a process by state statute, I believe, that if, they, if I would go to Barry and they would refuse to put something on, I could go to a commission member. If they would agree, we would sign a letter or a form. We would give it to our city clerk and then it does go on. They have no choice of the matter whatsoever. Okay, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to intercede. I Dennis, think we I need think to move only, on. I think it's only one. Oh, maybe it's only one. Yeah, it's only one. But, but, okay, it's only one. But but there's there's a process to get something on an agenda if they refuse to put it on. Yeah, and I think the only thing I'll just add on to that is it's it's the open meetings law that requires the notice. So as long as we don't want anyone to go get fined or go to jail talking about something that they're not. As long as you comply with open meetings law, which it requires 24 hour update of an agenda, there's some limited uh, time, then you're okay. Good discussion. Uh, one comment on that uh, approval of agenda. I noticed on our agenda, it doesn't say that. We don't have, 
We did, we approve minutes, but we don't approve agenda. We don't have any committees. Uh, no, no, maybe we're supposed to. Oh, okay. But we don't have any committees. That's between the, the chair and the city. The only time we do it is at the council. Okay. I, I just you, you're I, correct, Dennis. Never well, maybe we're it. supposed to be doing it. I don't know, but it's not a bad idea to have it on. <laughs> that should be something that should be put on every meeting: the approval of the agenda. We do need to move on, but Eric, I'll give you the floor. I just want to say, typically, when when bodies meet like this, and they say approval of the agenda. If someone has to be moved up on the agenda, that's the time they do that. It's not to change the agenda. It's just to move something up because somebody's got another appointment or mm. something like that. Well, we, and that's usually what why they say, do we approve the agenda? And that's at, the, at that point is when somebody can say, yeah, let's move number eight up to number one. We, we did find out just recently that right. if there was something on the agenda that we didn't want on the agenda, we could say we don't want that on the agenda and get a vote. and take it off the agenda. That has to be You're reaching for fine okay. straws here for us. Yeah. If there's a lot of that, this is gonna be a mess. No, hey, we're well. gonna move on. We are gonna move on. I wanna thank you all for your comments. This was productive. I really appreciate uh, Jesse in helping us understand that there's this airport operations ordinance potential out there. That was very productive. So moving on to number five, discussion and possible recommendation for the airport manager contract. I'm gonna give that over to Phil. Yep, uh, so provided to you all tonight uh, is the airport manager RFP response from Sunsport Aviation. Uh, if you recall, I provided an update at the last commission meeting outlining the airport <laughs> manager or fixed base operator RFP that would be closing on September 29th. Uh, Sunsport Aviation under Paul Phelps was the city's loan applicant. Following review of the RFP response, city staff and airport chair ERA felt it would be beneficial to bring Mr. Phelps in for an interview. We held this interview on October 10th uh, with myself, Administrator Boblick, and Director of uh, Business Development, Steve Sobiek, along with the chair. Uh, following the interview, it was unanimous that staff's recommendation would be to enter into contract negotiations with Mr. Phelps. Um, Sunsport is uh, not only looking to perform the general maintenance on the airport grounds, but also enter into a magnitude of business ventures that you have in front of you uh, that will support aviation growth in the community. Um, so what we're looking for the commission to do tonight is recommend um, that the city enter into such a contract with Sunsport Aviation uh, that would come to a future council meeting. Um, we were, were not looking to discuss contract components at the commission level, as there are a number of items that cause, you know, the conflicts that we've been discussing tonight um, in relation to the contract itself. Uh, contract negotiations have pr been preliminary discussed under the direction of city staff as well as uh, commissioner and alderman Ackreiner has sat in on some of those discussions with us. Any discussion? Chris? I, if I'm catching this right, there's two other names on here. One's a mechanic and one's a flight instructor. Yep, those are references to uh, some of his staff. Okay. Dennis? So what we're looking for tonight is a motion from this commission to recommend that we enter into Contract. We recommend to the council to enter into a contract with Paul. Correct. Yeah. It's appropriate for me to ask you, have you had any contact since Monday with him? I have. Um, he's receptive to what we discussed. So he's accepted. Basically how this would work is the city would draft a contract. It would then be reviewed by attorney Spankowski before sending it over to, um, to the FBO. They would then review it and make any comments, markups, you know, on that contract. Once we're all in an agreement, that is what would go to council. So oh, do you do any of that before you get council approval? Yes. You you would see the final contract at council. Right. But what are we going to do tonight? You're recommending that we enter into those contract move. negotiations. To move forward. Sunsport Aviation. Now, I want to explain something about this. At that interview, as we discussed, the four of us, if we were to 
put this on the agenda for next month, there would be a delay in offering this position to this candidate. And to expedite it, uh, I was agreeable to not wait until the negotiations were completed. We want to be able to offer this now. I want to not wait a month. And so that's why we agreed to have the city move forward on this. Adam. So we're going to, if, if we were to make the motion and decide to, to enter into this, we would not see any other details or have any other input on any of this, on, on any of it. We wouldn't even know. This isn't even the contract. This is just his RFP re response. So we wouldn't even know. So some of the heavy hitting topics on things that we wanted to see changed, we won't even have a kick at that can. Go to the council, which is the contract is between the city and the MPO, not the commission. We can't even recommend to the city and changes that we think would be a good idea. Well, that's where the councilmen come into play. Oh, they know everything about the airport, I guess. And I, I think this is an awful idea. I think we ought to wait and discuss the topics because there's things that we haven't been able to talk about that I don't think we should talk about in open setting. But I guess we have to talk about it. We're going to need to discuss these topics at some point. How long is this contract going to be? So if what happens if, if we decide that in, we, we have put an airport operations ordinance together and the city council approves that in 18 months? Do we have to, in, there, there's so many things, I mean, I think I think it's early. It's it's premature to to agree to a contract that we haven't seen, especially given the fact that has anybody here given input to the city on the topics that we want to see changed from the previous manager's contract? This is the most important thing that we can do. And I'm confused with this. I mean, I'm sure you know, every year we go through it. There's such thing. Whether we were supposed to be in closed session or not. We were last year, just a year ago, we were in closed session and redid the whole contract to everybody's liking. And now you want to go through it again and redo it all again? Well, there's, we just did this a year ago. I wasn't here then, but I can tell you there's a couple of things that I think should be done. Number one, I think the West, I'll just say it, I don't care. I think, I think the West end of the, of the FBO building ought to be open to the aviating public during non-business hours. Instead of putting, we have so many people come in. Perfect example. Yesterday, there was a $10 million airplane on the ramp, commercial aircraft. There was two pilots waiting. And if the manager wasn't in that day, those pilots would have been sitting in the dark dungeon in the back on the east end of that. It's, it's not hospitable to people. And this, we're not talking about just a guy in a little Cessna or Cirrus. This is, this is a PC-12, a nice airplane. Okay, they came back again today. So clearly they got business here. And those things operate at, these are business people. These aren't just hobby flyers. Eric was in, he let them into the, to the west end of that building. Had he not been in, those people would have been either sitting outside or they, some people can't even find that back door. I, th I think that's a change that should be made to that, to that. That's one of many things. It's a very simple one. Just add in there that during non-business hours, instead of the east end being open to the aviating public with a, a discrete code that, that every aviator knows, the west end is open. It's easy to, to block. There's, there's a partition. It's just the size and the location of those are the kind of things I think we need to discuss, not changing the entire scope of everything, but some of the, the nuances that make it where a corporate airplane will be like, yeah, we can go to Portage instead of going to the Dells because the Dells, they actually let you in to use the bathrooms or Madison. You know, um, Those are the things I think need to be discussed before, we, before the city now, council. Now, to the point of that, obviously the, the commission can at any time provide a recommendation to it would behoove it would behoove that person in that role to take those recommendations from the commission 
otherwise otherwise the body here is going to say yeah we should not re uh, renew this person's term that's exactly what happened a lot of people talk to mr peterson about that where is he going to be next month the thing is we can do that it would behoove him to have done that he didn't do it and we don't want to have manager turnover we want to have what we want as an airport commission and as an airport we want to make sure that sun sport aviation knows what we expect that's it it's the city's building they own it if sun sport aviation wants to lease it you go down to wisconsin aviation they're open 24 hours a day they actually pay the city to be there but there's there's a certain expectation when i walk when i go down there at midnight and with my airplane i can tell you i, I can guarantee that there's going to be someone on the ramp to wave me in if I want fuel, they'll put it on. I can walk right in the door and I've got accommodations. Most airports are like that. I can tell you on dozens of occasions, I've watched pilots go to that door and they don't know what, they, they go to the door that's right there, they can't get in and they just leave. Because there's, there's it's, it's just common practice at all airports. That's, and it's a basic thing. It can, it, it's something that I'm, I think we could put into a contract the West End shall be open to the aviating public, just like the East End is now. It'll just be the West End. That's the simple things like that. But I think we need time to discuss that as a, a commission because maybe, maybe there have been negotiations with Paul, and Paul said, you know, I I need all that space for all my inventory. And if that's a deal breaker, okay, then we can't do that. I was going to say, how are you tying this into the contract? Okay. Now but I but if, if he's, if he just, if there's no difference in there, we don't want to have to force his hand. It's in the contract. Just provide simple. So, I mean, and I got a list of things that we, clearly we can't talk about, but they're just details that I think should go into that one sentence here and one sentence there. Kim. I agree that we need to get, Eric's leaving the end of this month. Thank, thank you for calling me. Uh, me and Eric have had conversations before. I, and I, I personally have never had a problem with him because I, he's been valuable. He's, he's, he's always given me the information I needed and he had great conversations. But with all the, all the stuff that we're looking at doing for changing, we're looking at a new airport operations uh, ordinance and you know, some of these things that you're talking about. Can we make this contract a one-year contract and then we can revise it next year? Once we, once we get all this stuff in line, then we can go forward with a three-year contract. Chris, it, to a degree it is, it's a three-year contract Nobody talks to anybody, okay. but at any time we can notify him or he can notify us that he doesn't want to extend so, that beyond a year. So it is, it is actually a one year it's contract one year with contract. an automatic renewal for automatic year renewal. two and three. Yeah. However, if there is that coordination and correspondence leading into year two, there's another kick at the can. Yes. We can't have laps. That's my question is, if we do it your way, Adam, and I'm not saying your way is the bad way. If we do it your way, you realize that come November 1, we don't have an airport manager. And if that takes a month, two months, four months, can we afford that? It, would, it wouldn't cost us additional money. So you're, No, no, I'm not talking financially. Can we afford that that airport does not have an airport manager for a period of time. Um, well, I think I, the only issue that we would have would be who, who, who would buy the fuel and who would who would process the fuel. I mean, I can't, you know, because uh, airport commit. I I could buy fuel and I could sell fuel, but there's a conflict. I'm sure. I'm sure there's a conflict. Um, but uh, aside of that, do I think this should take more than a month after this? No. But do I think that we should just go and I mean another thing I, I proposed to, to Phil is that and I, I 
nothing wrong with that contract, but that contract requires the city council and maybe the city council wants that, but we have to have 90 days. Is that what it is? 90 days. You have to give the new contractor 90 days notice that you don't want to renew. I think that's standard in all of our employment contracts with everybody in the city. And, and so how would the city, maybe it, maybe it's, it's, it would be okay, but if the city wanted to hold on to its right, would, would, could we just have the city council say that they may not extend? If we have certain things that would be out there? Well, the, the, well you got to remember, Adam, that's going to be a two-way street. So if we say we may not extend, then he's going to ask us, well, then maybe that's what I'm going to give you guys, is I may not be willing to sign on for another year. Or if you guys only want 30 days, then I'm only going to give you 30 days. Just remember, that's a two-way street that protects the city as much as it protects him. And I, I think if we're if we're a good commission, they're not. He's not going to want to go anywhere. We no, have I, we have I, something he can't replace. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree with what you're saying. We, we're not, keep in mind everything you're talking about. We had one applicant. It isn't like we had this list of people to pick from, you, and we picked this individual. We had a applicant. So if it comes back that he doesn't like what we're proposing to him, we're at square one. I can tell you the only reason you had one applicant is the aviation community is small. Yeah. And everybody knew that he was the best person for that and job. He, he you, if it was, if this, I can tell you, if this was people just putting their hat in the ring, you would have had, you could have had probably 10 or 15 people apply. I know that because people asked and I said, honestly, unless you guys are going to be putting the services together like Paul has, and you have a resume like Paul has good luck. Yeah. I, I can't argue Look, because I don't know anything about that. But what I do know is when we're advertising in the city for employees, that's always a big factor to me. How many applicants did we get? Is there a pool of people out there that we can pick from? In this case, we had one. Let's get back. The bottom line is, do we want to withhold a recommendation knowing that that's going to take more time? We will be without an airport manager until we can make a recommendation. Do we want to take that time to review the information? I, I would also like to add that if that is delayed, there's no guarantee that Paul sticks around. Sure. He has that right contract. Chris. Proper to make a recommendation now at this point? You can at any time. I would like to make the recommendation to take uh, Paul Sunsport Phelps, Aviation. Sunsport Aviation and Paul Phelps as the owner to be the next airport <clears throat> airport commissioner because we can't uh, enter into a contract. <clears throat> Approve the contract, yes. I'll second that. Any other discussion? Bill, what would happen if we didn't have a manager from um, 1031 with fuel sales? What would the options be? That would fall to city staff to fill tanks, um, which you know have accounts with the fueling companies. We don't have um, really the means to take that on. Would the airport commission take that on? I have a con. So if for example, if you want to take that on, no, no, the and I have a contract with you. No, could the airport commission take it on and buy, buy the fuel? Again, are you signing the, the city signing the check? We would have to set up accounts with them. Well, it's, it was, no, it's no different if, you, if the commission proctors the fuel or a city staff member what proctors if it was, the fuel. What if it was prepaid? The payment is still made by the city. So say it was say you didn't have to pay for it until you got paid for it, right? Say the supplier just filled the tank and said, "When you guys get your money, pay me back." Right? How would the, how uh, could the city collect payment? So you would probably want that to be in writing. Oh, that's fine. I got I, yeah. Could the city collect payment? I mean, it's a simple thing because we're talking about fifteen days, and, and that's the problem. Is I I think if there's a way to do that, I think that should be done, so we can get the details in that contract that on a three-year contract, because really the idea is to 
get the, the, the important heavy hitting topics in there. And then, as you said, give that, give Sunsport Aviation that security and give the airport, airport commission and the city that security. Before we have a recommendation on this motion, I want to hear from Mr. Peterson, who's been I want, patient. I just want everybody to know, when I took over, there was no airport manager. He had retired. He went for a month without a manager. It's very possible to do it. I think it's up to the city if they want to do it. But Adam's got a lot of good points there, and I really, I really think that you got to look at the details in, in the contract. I, I mean, I, that's, your, that's your job.